Greetings from Seoul, Korea. I am tasteless. With me is Artosis. Uh, we are the casting archon. That's and right. I got to say, I am still shaking from that last game. That is just unreal. Yeah. I can't believe Tester survived that. No, I mean, I, I he played great. His micro was superb. But at the same time, Free Saga made a lot of mistakes in his micro. It was the perfect storm of weirdness to make Tester win that game. That was insane. Yeah. I actually... I, you know, I was looking, turn around, trying to see if maybe his coach had a stick, like pushing the mouse hand of Free Saga. <laughs> Wasn't the case. <laughs> Was not the case, man. Eh. Very, very exciting. I, don't, I hope we could top that today because uh, that is uh, actually one of the craziest games I've seen in the whole tournament. We do have OGS uh, Zenio versus Hungun Prime. Yes, and uh, you know Zenio showed us some good games, and well. His Banelings killed a command center right after we said that this would never, ever happen. Yes. Made us look pretty dumb. Well, actually, no. It made him look pretty dumb. Why would you kill a command center with Banelings? Right the there command was like two center. others sitting right near it, too. He's like, <laughs> which one of these should I kill with my Banelings? Like, <laughs> anyways, no, he's gotta, a great player. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Really, great really player. good. But he's against Hung and Prime. So we'll have to see. Uh, and uh, Hung and Prime, so... So good, man. He yeah. beat Cezanne from the OGS team, uh, yeah. one of Xenio's teammates. And hopefully Xenio was able to learn from Cezanne's mistakes, go over you know, what Cezanne was feeling during that game other than anger, <laughs> you know, feeling what went wrong and whatnot. But Hangun, a uh, very top-of-the-line Protoss player. Yes. I'm kind of expecting him to knock out our poor Zerg player. Well, Zergs have been having a very hard time. I think we're down to four Zergs left in this tournament. And it's getting pretty low. Yeah. Getting pretty cool extinct. has advanced. Uh, Idra has been knocked out, and also Juke Jung has been knocked out. Yes. So we are down to just a handful of Zergs left. Xenio, one of them, as you see here, and he of course knocked out, knocked out Myth Prime in the last round. Myth Prime, I think, one of the lower level players in the tournament, just kind of an all-in Reaper type of guy. Uh, but Hong and Prime, total sicko, took out OGS to Zane, two to one with. Really, really good play. Like, he didn't just beat him because he's like Protoss and the guy's Zerg or something like that. So don't think that for a second. He beat him because Hong and Prime is a better player than Suzanne was. Yeah, he Hung was Prime macroing, really good. multitasking. He was just playing correctly. You know, yep. very, very strong, very good play. Some of the best Protoss play that I have seen. So, uh, you know, Senior is going to have his work cut out for him no matter what. This is going to be a tough game. And, um,. <sighs> Too bad Zergs is just having such a hard time because um, it's slowly uh, whittling down the diversity <laughs> of races that we have at this tournament. Yeah. But, um, that's going to get patched soon. So, uh, guys, thank you so much again for joining us. By the way, thanks again to our sponsors at uh, TG Sambo and Intel. And, um, yeah, man, we actually have a lot of foreigners uh, coming into the studio, which is really exciting for us. Yeah. There's a, I already bumped into five, and actually I just and saw two some more just coming walked in, just walked think, through yeah. the doors. So it's really exciting. Um we love We're taking over, man. We're taking over, man. <laughs> um, not not in the brackets, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, maybe GSL Season 2 will be different. We still got TLO. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, um... We're going to get the um, maps up here next. Let's talk a little bit about the maps they eliminated before that uh, graphic even gets up. Uh, Xenio eliminates Steps of War. No shocker there. Yeah, yeah. That map. It's, I think it's actually a great map, but it's like not exactly a map I'd want to play in a tournament where the prize pool is close to $87,000. Yeah. Um, and he eliminated Delta Quadrant. Now, I wasn't expecting him to eliminate Delta Quadrant. Can mm. you, you, you play more Zerg than yeah. me, so I was wondering if you actually had any insight it's, into that. It's not a map Zerg wants to play on. The problem with it is that the player can both... Both tech and expand at the exact same time. Yeah. While Zerg cannot. Uh, you know, Zerg basically is always going to expand unless there's some crazy one base build that which would be horrible against yeah. Protoss. Like what? But uh, you know, it's a great map to remove for that reason. You know, if he can tech and go for an expansion at the same time, it's like, what are you gonna do as Zerg? It's it's a very difficult map to play on against a really top end Protoss. So it's a good map to remove. But Delta Quadrant being removed by Hung and Prime too, that's kind of funny. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Um, I, 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 I actually so. would have thought that would have been a map they probably would have both wanted to play on. Yeah. But, um, here, this is the map lineup. It's dead. Lost Temple. Makes for a pretty standard ZBP. Mm -hmm. um, we got Scrap Station. That can be interesting. And Zelnaga Caverns. Uh, that could be tough if you get four yeah. Warp Gate Rush it's and a, stuff. a pretty decent pool, though, really, yeah. when you think about it. For a ZVP, uh, the, of course, four Warp Gate All-Ins on Zelnaga. 
so strong. And as I asked him in the interview last time, Hongan Prime knows this, but wants to give the fans good games. That's actually what he said when I asked him why he did not use any of these strong strategies on the maps that they are sick on, such as Zelnaga Caverns. So Hongan Prime, I think, should be a fan favorite. Uh, definitely one of my very favorite Protosses in the whole tournament. So legitimate, so straight up, very macro oriented, a fun player and to watch. So smart. Got yeah. a good personality, too. Yeah, a very nice kid. And he's handsome. You know? I know. Good, right? good guy all He gets around. all A's in school, and like his mother is so happy. He takes out the trash every he's day. Like, he's like a captain of the football team and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, dating know? the cheerleaders. And, oh, and we're starting this game, so let's get ready for some ZVP action. Right now. <laughs> They're tricking us out today, Tasteless. <laughs> I'm getting my cues a lot earlier than normal. Yeah. Um, so, Hi. I still see we're on the preview screen, but the game is loading. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, there is OGS Zeno. OGS Zeno. OGS Zeno. And here's our blue Protoss player. Hung on Prime. Hung on Prime. That, that is, is Hung on Prime. That is Hung on Prime. Probe. <laughs> the probe, now, this is interesting, and this is a very strong PBZ uh, strategy here. Yeah, the uh, pylon outside, of course, means he's either going to go uh, forge, or gateway, or two gateway. Yep. Or perhaps nexus into forge. It's he's got a lot of options. Now, that, something weird just happened there. I, we didn't have a, a shot of it on the screen, but did you notice he? I did, did he not? Did he, not he, see, he saw the creep, right? I, I, I'm starting to get worried, actually. Yeah, he saw the creep. Okay. Okay. He and just doesn't want to waste an extra probe making the gateways. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, and he's actually, it looks like he's about to show us all why they are making the Zealot have a longer build time. Yeah, look at this guy. He's doing a little dance over here. I'm going to make a gateway, gateway. <laughs> so yeah, two gateway in these nice close positions on Lost Temple. Xenio is not going to be able to expand if he tries to make a hatcher down there. Excuse me. Uh, it's going to be killed, and he's going to die. But... He has made his pool first, so that's good. And it looks like he's just kind of saving up his money a little bit, getting his queen out, getting some zerglings out. And he's definitely going to want to know what his opponent is doing before he lays on that hatchery. It can be very, very, very hard to hold a two gateway rush if you just go pool expansion. Yeah. The lings but, are out. Hmm. They are going to... Very fast forge we just saw, by the way. Kind of peculiar. Yeah, I didn't expect that, actually. I think he's uh, deciding that he's not going to do too much of the rush. Stopping that. Uh, the pool was actually very, very quick then. Yeah, it we was very We were actually very so busy pool. watching that probe. It was a very quick pro uh, pool, so he just walled off with that forge. Makes perfect sense now. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. One salt's going to go down. And this salt won't have too much luck about this either. <laughs> no, he's in trouble. Good move by Xenio here. And uh, that is that is very annoying. Now, this is actually player. this actually walls off completely. Mm. So uh, he needs to get zealots or a cannon out or something. Um, and, and the second zealot should be popping out pretty quick this, here. This game might end very quickly. That was a very early pull from the zerg. Yeah, I wish I could go back in time and see exactly how quickly that pull is made. But um, you know. It, that's that's kind of a risky play. If you make a pool that early and the, it, there's just like normal gates on top of the ramp, you're going to pretty much hold that <laughs> every time. Ah, but he's going to rush right into uh, Roach Roaches. Horn. And uh, that's actually really good because the forge is already so hurt, he's actually going to be able to bust through there. If he doesn't have like three cannons, at least two, but probably three, this could be deadly. These games today have been much more rush, rush intensive. Mm. We don't act, we actually rarely ever see early pull here from the Zerg, so I didn't even um, hop over there and take a look at it. Yeah. You know, I I, I think that um, this is actually pretty smart of Xenia, though. Hongan is so strong. He's such a good player. It's nice to open up with a very strong build against something like that. And here you go. The cannons are going to be up, I believe, in time. The roaches should not be able to break through there. Of course, you can put those behind the building. The roaches can't hit them. They will block yeah. so easily any attacks here. 
And that was close. Yep. And now I don't know what the contingency plan is here for the Zerg. You know, uh, I think he's going to be kind of okay from here. You know, he killed a few Zealots, forced those cannons so early. He can go ahead and expand, and he's not going to be too far behind. Uh, not too far ahead either, but... It was. It actually all worked out pretty well for Xenia, I think. He's uh, in pretty good shape. I love the, the cannon force. That's really what helped him to catch up after going for such an early pull. That was some great crisis management. And, you know, I think the Protoss probably expected this game to be looking a lot different right now. He probably thought he was going to be rushing a Zerg player and stopping him from getting a hatchery. Instead, he was actually defending a Zerg rush. Yeah. And, uh, you know, losing those early Zealots. Didn't get to put any pressure oh. on. Nice. Oh, this sucks to be these zealots. <laughs> yeah, man. Let me in. <laughs> they keep knocking. It's like, that's not the right knock. Like, knock, knock, What's knock. What's the password? <laughs> well, he's going to lose these three zealots. Not too impactful, but still a frustrating moment here. Yeah, you know, it, he doesn't want to lose those zealots. You know, it's three zealots. Enough to kill an ultralisk. Yeah, it's actually so crazy how good zealots are against ultralisk. You can see he's trying to just get an angle here where he can actually hit mm. this forge. Not going to happen, though. That's why that cannon is a little bit further up than its friend. Make sure that that cannot occur. And now, uh, Hongan, he's going to have to go right up. I like how he's just expanding uh, his probe count by chrono-boosting his next eye. Meanwhile, Xenio, of course, going for that layer and Zergling speed. It's pretty standard after that opening. Uh, you know, that opening was very safe against something such as, uh, you know, if he went Nexus first, he would have lost. Uh, if it was one gateway on the ground, he would have lost. Uh, you know, it just, I kind of like it. It was an uh, interesting, you know, couple time build. Can't, yeah. can't do it every game. If you're doing it every game, he's just going to be like, LOL, and put it up top of his ramp and own you. But, you know, every well, now and then, something like that can be quite awesome. We've seen a lot of these uh, guys today trying to predict uh, the opponent's build. Yeah. Um, to get ahead. This tournament is getting more and more competitive as more and more money is on the line. Mm -hmm. Hydralis dead now on the way. I, I, I would have thought he might have gone Mutas or something like that because these cannons are actually so far out, you have to get so much defense everywhere. That's that's quite true, but at the same time, the cannons can knock that wall in down without being hit, so I like that as well. And Xenio, I don't think he's really a Muta player. There's Zerg players that are Muta players, and there's Zerg players that are ground players. Yeah. You know, and uh, cool, of course, a Muta player. Xenio, he feels more like a ground player to me. Doesn't, you know, Muta's are kind of a different style than what we've seen out of him. Very multitasking and intensive. Mm. And uh, as you can see, he might morph this into uh, an overseer in a minute here and do some more scouting because he doesn't actually know what the Protoss is doing. Warp gate's up, plus one on the way. And we have any uh, tech here? I like that he's getting hallucination so he can scout what's going on, but at the same time, Overlord speed and Hydra range being uh, gotten. So I think we're gonna see a creep highway and just Xenio attacking pretty much all-in with his Hydras. It's not yeah. truly an all-in build, though. I, I should not call it all-in. It's just a very aggressive attack with these Hydras. And you normally take your third while you're doing it, about the time you get up to their natural. Well, he's getting Stalkers now. Robo going up. That is the correct play from here. Because if that attack comes, Xenio's going to have to switch over to Spire attack. Now this is going to be interesting. You know, the problem for Zerg, of course, is that Zerg doesn't have anywhere to expand. Actually, neither does Protoss, really. Um, that's comfy. And Nidus take a look worm. here. Nidus Worm. Nidus Worm over here. So we may not be seeing a Creep Highway. We may just see a Nidus Worm pop up, but there are, is a Zealot patrolling for this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. But then again, you know, Nidus Worms, they die pretty quickly. But Yeah, and they cannot be canceled. A lot of people I see are like, LOL, just try the Nidus Worm and cancel if they see it. No, you can't cancel it. You lose 100 minerals and 100 gas. And it, it Oh, on the ledge. I oh, lied. on the ledge. I didn't expect it to be over here. Very cool. Going to make a couple make spine some, crawlers. Oh, my God. Going to stop gas from being gotten up there. And Hallucination really going to help out right there for a moment. But targeted, taking a lot of damage there. Goes down. Going to end up with a lot less gas than he wants, though. And if you're going Robo, double Robo, um, it's going to be pretty bad because you're not going to get as many, uh, well, enough stuff to actually uh, combat that or get the Colossus out. We have an attack here. Uh, and it looks like... Our Protoss player is actually uh, doing a decent job of holding this, but when more Hydras come out, Hydras deal damage so fast, such yeah. high DPS. And I love the Overseer being made, so he can snipe that Observer, but 
Uh, really, the Protoss is going to have to give up the last three mineral patches and the gas and whatever is on this side, basically, and just wait for Robos because Hydra's on the high ground here with that Overseer, with that spine crawler. No, you are not clearing that right now. Sorry. Now, what I really want to see, more than anything in the whole world right now, Tasteless, is using an Overlord, go to the island, pop Nidus's up on the islands, and expand there. Yeah, you can Take turtle island here bases. And here. Yeah, that's an actually, that'd be so sick if you did that. Mm hmm. That's what he's got to do, man. Uh oh, Forge is going to go down as well. And this is going to be problematic, but with a Colossus out, I don't. No, the Zerg can hold this position. Uh, no, it's eventually going to go down for sure, especially when Thermal Lance is gone. We're now harassing, but he does not want to take any real damage on that Colossus. Shield damage is fine for now. And already retreating a lot of units in here. But we got another Nidus Worm over oh, here in the main! Sick. Oh my god! Risky strategy, but totally working out right now, targeting the Nexus. Oh, this could be huge. Wow. Oh, and he's definitely going to get it. He's yeah. going to get it. He's going to get it. The Nexus goes down. The Hydras slowly walking like grandmas back to the creep where they suddenly take their super grandma pills and get in that Nidus. They do walk like grandmas when they're not on creep. Yeah. They? And now he comes back out here again. If he can figure out a way to snipe this structure, it's wow. going to be huge. Right he now, Hongan in a lot of problem. A lot of problem. Oh, God. He can even get a this pylon over here to take out the power into the warp gates. Wow. Just wow, I mean, you know, really, really nice Nidus usage. Very clever play here by Xenio. And to, you know, he pulled that Zealot away that was patrolling, but now it's time to clean it up, get his economy back together. Hongan Prime, can he stay calm? Well, he's looking pretty good. Now he's got to expand the creep highway out. I think he was not doing a really good job of that before. There's really no reason that there isn't more creep all over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, you know, you gotta multitask, be very, very fast with that. And, uh, you know, as we see, actually he has good APM, so no Not reason. Bad. You're right, Tasteless. He should have had more creep. It's unacceptable. But here we go. He's going to attack the front base here. Two Colossi, a mostly Hydra army, but there is a Spire being produced right now. So hopefully we can see some Corruptors to help out with that. Let's Which see. You mean? This is not looking good for the Protoss. Yeah, Protoss is in a lot of trouble. He's Can't got some lose. roaches of tank damage in the front here. He takes out one warp game. But there are a lot of Colossi out, and I tell you what, even if it's looking good for him, these Colossi are going to do a huge job. Where is this Nidus right now? Uh, oh, there it is. Interesting. These quicker uh, rallies, yeah. I guess. But guess what? There are so many force fields, so many Hydras, and the Colossi, though, Colossi plus force field versus Hydra? That equals dead Hydras, man. He needs to get more creep over here for these Hydras to actually move faster. They're just too slow and they're not on creep. Yeah, you, and that was actually kind of a wasted thing there. That was just, that was just kind of weird, it actually. It takes so much micro to actually rally through a Nidus. You have to be very far away to make that worthwhile. Yeah, that actually did not... I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah, I disagree as well, Tasteless. It's not all right. I'm not cool with it. I would object to that if I was a lawyer and this was a case. It's just, dude, it was just such, such an odd thing to do to put a Nidus Worm here. I mean, mm. you just expand the creep and they get there just as fast. We have some Corruptors being made, but will they be made in time? There are a lot of Colossi out and killing this orange, uh, this uh, gold base rock. I don't know. I feel like he should just kind of push in. He just killed a lot of Hydras. He knows some mostly Hydra army. He has to know that anti closs measures are being made right now. Well, he does have the option to actually engage here, but I don't know how many... How much energy all these sentries have. He doesn't quite have enough mm. to make a full-on force field wall. Yeah, he's got to be very careful here. Here are the Corruptors coming in from the side, and this could be bloody. Oh, man, but so many ground units are being taken out. <laughs> I think the Colossus wow. might have done their job. So even if they're taken out, now the Stalkers can do their role. That's right, even the Queen going down right here. One Colossi left. So many Stalkers, though. Can Xenio even make enough ground units to hold off these stalkers. Oh, this is pretty bad. Yeah. He needs to get more. Um, even though this expansion is basically unknown, mm. um, if he gets over here and takes out this, uh, that could be game. Yeah, you know, the Colossi, they're just so cost-effective that they, they crush these ground units. It's, I don't know, man. This army looks like it might be able to take Xenio out. And it was, yeah, Siege Colossi, man. 
Very good unit. And here we go. The Corruptors are out again. Corrupting some of those claw sites so they take more damage. And his hatchery looks like it's going to go down. He's not even going to try. We're going to try last second. Here he comes. The Roach is moving in here. Um, trying to get close to the Colossus, but Sogers are pretty good against Roaches. Yep. Uh, with Micro. He's not micro him right now. He's probably too busy macroing. Corruptor's doing decent damage to the Colossus, but, you know, not enough corruptor Corruptors. And it looks like he's just going to crush I, through the rest I, of this army. I think that's it. I think that's going to be GG. Yeah, you know, really he cute play by Xenio with all these uh, Nidusworms and everything, but just cannot hold the Colossus counterattack. Hungan stayed very, very calm, did exactly what he needed to do, and cleaned the floor with that Hydra-based army. He got bopped. Yeah, man, That's he got the best seriously word bopped. He got bopped. He bopped him. And th I mean, this is it. This is brutal. Um, this is, if you go back over here, there's nothing that's going to be left of the Zerg's tech tree. Expect GG. I didn't. I thought he would have typed in GG already, but it said he's making hatcheries over here. There it is. GG. GG. Hong and Prime takes game one. Despite some really cute and nice play by uh, Zinio there, you know what really, oh, man. really went wrong there is, you know, he he wanted to kill that Nexus so badly, he killed, he made a ton of Hydras, too many Hydras really. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you make that many Hydras, you just cannot stop the Colossus army when it comes out. And I mean, that's it, man. Hydras are just, they are so weak against Colossus that it's like one of the hardest counters in the entire game. Yeah. It's like a siege tank versus an immortal. Like it's that level of wow, you get owned. Yeah, you you cannot it's like a really deal with it. Versus an SCV. That's pretty. It's pretty unfair. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Give that SCV a rocket pack or something. Make it a little bit more fair. No, but it's just. I mean, it's 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 like that in some cases. Sometimes we have hard counter units, and sometimes mm. we have soft counter units. And that was a situation where uh, he got himself in a position he probably should have allowed. I don't agree with that. Nightus worm in the middle of the map. No, that, that made me suddenly think silly. that you just like Nidus Worms a lot. That was just totally weird. Yeah, it, the thing is, it, it takes so many clicks to actually rally through a Nidus Worm, yeah. and he was so close positions. If he just puts two Overlords, which, by the way, have speed with creep dropping, so yeah. that he can just rally it, it's going to be much quicker, much more efficient. So that was, I don't know if that was like a mistake, or it was just a very strange moment. Well, you moment. can't cancel it, so if you make a mistake, that's it. That Nidus Worm is coming up. That is true. It's like, I can't stop now. He's like, I was just <laughs> eating all the dirt, man, just going right to the surface. <laughs> We're going to go to game number two in just a minute here. Um, I got to say, Xenio looked pretty crushed um, in that last game. But, um, you know, he can come back and do this. He's just got to uh, play a little bit cleaner. His strategy was good at the start, but it didn't have a late game set up. The countdown has started. Let's go to this game. Let's do this.